I love this car. Even just sitting here, as soon as I take that cover off, it just puts a smile on my face. Anyways, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I know I have uh, kind of been MIA for almost over a month now. Wanted to start what I'm about to do right now. About a month ago, but I went on vacation. I was in the Middle East. I went to Dubai for like two weeks. It was awesome. And then I've just been busy with work and stuff like that. But it's what, December 1st today? So I wanted to start this at the beginning of November, but we're a month behind, but that's okay. I'll make up for it. So basically what I'm going to be doing today is the first steps for my uh, NAT build. So I'm going to be turbocharging this car. We're going to add twin turbos to it and a bunch of other goodies. I'm going to make a video after this one showing you all of the parts I bought. And I'll go into depth with that one. Today, I just want to start taking things apart in the engine bay. Just get one step closer to pulling it out. It's my first time doing something like this. So I'm gonna break things. I'm gonna mess up a lot of things. I'm sure this is gonna be uh, very fun. So bear with me. Also, uh, just a little disclaimer. I might, if the videos are kind of delayed, it's because I'm trying to make some progress on the car. I am recording as I'm going. I'm gonna record everything. It's just sitting down to edit it and then post it, which is gonna be a bit of a delay. I'd rather put most of my time in right now uh, when I can't drive this car anyways to just finish the work, right? I wanna get this thing on the road come spring, summertime. So I'm just gonna be trying to bang it out as much as I can. I will keep recording. Those videos probably just won't be posted a day or two after I record them. It might be a week or two, so. I wanna put all my time as time into completing this. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. So today, basically, I'm just gonna start taking things apart, get everything disconnected as much as I can. I'm also gonna do a compression test again. I did one, I think about two years ago on this car and everything was good, but just for the peace of mind, I wanna do another one. So I'm gonna do that. This is not gonna be a how-to video, by the way. I'm not gonna do a how-to on how to turbo your Nissan. It's just gonna be some good content for you guys to watch. So if you wanna watch, a video of how to remove a Nissan 300ZX motor. There's lots of videos on YouTube. They're great. That's what I used when I was learning how to do this. So hit those ones up. But if you just want to see, you know, a noob like me trying to do this, uh, stay tuned. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get right into it. Okay, so I just want to show you guys something before I take the rest out here. So I got the coil packs out. The connectors on this side look okay. It's kind of snapped here, but uh, the coil pack connectors aren't in bad condition. But what I do want to show you is this. So this coil pack connector right here on the uh, six cylinder is fine. It's not snapped or anything. It looks okay. But these two, 
if you can see, there's no clip actually grabbing on uh, to the coil pack. The wiring is just, the wire is just in the coil pack, but there's nothing actually holding it in. You can just pull it out without having to unclip anything, which is not good, obviously, because you could have uh, connectivity issues and stuff like that and misfires. So spoiler alert, I have a completely new wiring harness that's going in this car as well. That's gonna go in this engine, so I'm glad I purchased the wiring harness. You'll see that when I uh, upload my next video where I show you all the parts that are going in this car and everything I purchased. So yeah, coil packs are pretty much out, balance tube is off. Time to do the compression. Like I said, when I first bought this car, I did a compression test on it, everything was good. Two or three years ago. I don't know about you guys, but every time I do a compression test on my own car, it makes me pretty nervous, even though I know nothing's really wrong with it. For whatever reason, if this compression test is not what I want it to be, this is gonna scrap everything that I had planned for this car this winter, so fingers crossed. First one's 170 and holding pretty good as well. Okay, I'm not gonna show you guys every single cylinder. I'm just trying to bang this out. I'll show you guys our results. All right, boys, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of how to do a compression test on a Nissan 300ZX Z32. Basically, what you wanna do is make sure the car is warmed up. Uh, let it idle for like 10 minutes. Pull the fuse for the fuel pump, which is right over here. It's the far right one. Then crank the car over a couple times just to depressurize all the fuel in the system. Some people forget to do that. It's a really good idea to do it. Then uh, start taking off your uh, coil pack connectors and take out all your coil packs. Take out all your spark plugs. After the spark plugs are out, then you take your com compression gauge with the hose. Screw the bottom of it into where the spark plug was sitting. Uh, screw it in and then what you want to do is go inside the car. Also, side note, make sure your battery is really healthy. A poor battery will give you inaccurate results. So once you have the gauge in your cylinder, um, go inside the car and make sure you have your throttle completely wide open. So pedal to the floor and crank it over. It takes about maybe five to eight cranks to get the highest reading. And then once it's cranked, uh, check what the, uh, what the gauge says. That's your compression for that cylinder. Write it down and then go through each cylinder so one two three four five six go through all six write it down for the na motor ideal compression you want to be at is 180 that's really good compression for a stock twin turbo motor i'm not sure but i think it was in the 140s and you want all of your cylinders to be between the 14 to 16 psi range you don't want them to be too different from each other you want similar compression in all of them so if you have around 170 or 180 on an NA motor, all of the PSIs for each cylinder are between, are within 14 PSI of each other, you have really good compression, okay? So the reason I was checking my compression is because I, I bought thousands of dollars worth of parts to uh, boost my car. As you can see, it's an NA motor. Um, and before doing that, it doesn't take that long. Uh, I mean, it took me a long time because I'm trying to record everything I do, but it doesn't take that long and it doesn't hurt to check your compression. Again, before you buy parts, before you try doing anything with your motor, check your compression. I bought my parts ahead of time. I knew I had good compression. I did a compression test on this when I first was, when I was buying it. So I knew the compression was okay, but I just, for peace of mind, I wanted to do it again right now. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna show you guys the results. Boy, so here's what we have here. I tested it twice. This is cylinder one, two, three, four, five, six. The first time, these are the numbers I got, and these are the numbers I got the second time. I might be off by two or three PSI. You know, sometimes you, you mess it up with a gauge like this. There's 30 PSI going from here to here. So, you know, 
I did the best I could, but I did it twice because the first time I couldn't remember if I kept the throttle open for all of them. So I just redid it again. So I'm at 175, 180, 180, 175, 180, 180. Clearly here I did something very different, but these are the numbers I got. I checked it twice. With that being said, and with these compression numbers, I guess all we can really do now is send it. We are gonna send it, boys. We are gonna boost this thing. We got a healthy NA motor here. We're gonna turbocharge it, and we're gonna push some power next spring. Just gonna continue uh, taking things apart. The main thing I wanted to do today was do a compression test. Sun's starting to set, but I'm gonna see if I can uh, take apart some of the stuff here at the front, drain the radiator put some penetrating fluid on the exhaust bolts and stuff like that so I can bang this out. So I'll leave you guys with that for today. You might see a little bit more of me just taking it apart, but uh, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. Uh, next video most likely is going to be me showing you the parts I got. So stay tuned for that. Again, apologies if, if the videos aren't every week or every two weeks. I'm just trying to finish this as fast as I can. Not as fast as I can. I'm, I'm just trying to do as much work as I can to this car. And that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying to do as much work as I can to this car. And I want to, I will be recording everything is just sitting down to edit it. Editing takes a long time, especially because I'm not very good at it. Basically, I have the choice between sitting down for five, six hours to edit a video or spending five, six hours on the car and then editing at a later time. So yeah, if videos are delayed, that's pretty much why. Hope you guys understand. But anyways, it's happening. But with that being said, I'll see you guys again soon.